rolling coaster brand new month and uh, second quarter of the year so look at the commodities market and uh we're going to have uh, this conversation around the world of oil and the currencies market bonali odosi is back here with us in the studio to have uh, uh, this two-way chat good morning good morning yes you were here th three days ago yes and we spend most of the time almost all the time on the commodities market looking at how we're doing with the consumables as it were bread and butter have a fried egg and whatever you, mm. you call it and juice and soft drinks and all that but today we need to talk about the world of oil and uh, if we look at uh, prices now to be trending higher despite the increase steady increase in the recount in the u.s so i was a little bit happy this morning when i saw the brent slightly above 54 dollars a barrel and the nymex also heading in the same direction around 50 around 48 or thereabouts so uh talk to us about this uh for about a minute okay so all prices have as you know has increased to about 54 dollars per barrel um it's dropped or increased to this amount because um there were expectations that u.s oil production would decline but as soon as the reports came out you saw that um u.s production had increased to about a 14 month high to um, 9.2 million barrels per day. Um, this only like sh moved oil prices down by about 16 cents. So the, the reaction wasn't so you know drastic on oil prices. But if we look at you know regarding what we face in Nigeria, oil prices as of January February was about 56. It was up to about 56 dollars per barrel. So it's it's not so good news compared to where we were before. End of March we we're about 50 dollars per barrel so it's great that we're moving you know in the right direction but then the, the the movement up would only be dependent on you know the forces from the u.s market and you know opex opex efforts to cut production now right now um compliance levels are about 90 percent over 90 percent and um it shows that you know opec and non-opec countries are making you know, dramatic efforts to cut production to, you know, m move prices. But, so, but with the U.S. oil production, you know, fighting this price hike, we don't, we don't know what, you know, we expect that um, oil prices would only hover around $55 per barrel. It's always scare, it scares folks when uh, global oil prices go up. Yeah. Well, we like it because of the FX reserves. Yeah. Yes, $30 definitely. billion dollars we're doing not yes. too badly yeah. uh, under the circumstances at the moment. But again, on, on the other side is that how that impacts the prices of uh, products at the retail uh, site in Nigeria. But it was good news when the NNPC uh, says, well, the, the increase in bridging costs to about 720, uh, cobo, which is 720 cobo, yeah. uh, would not have impact on uh, retail prices. And I think that seemed to have quiet everybody who perhaps think that uh, petrol prices will go up anytime soon. Yeah, it's good news. And, you know, the CBN um, released a statement saying that they're going to increase, um, they're going to um, sell forward contracts to oil importers. So I think it, that helps, you know, reduce their cost in a way, because obviously I think they're getting the exchange rate as a subsidized rate. So we don't, you know, we don't expect, you know, the oil prices, domestic oil prices to, you know, move from where so they are. So it looks like all hands on deck. Yes. Yes. Between Kachiku's hands and the Mefele's hands, looks like they're having, uh, yeah. uh, putting hands together. Definitely. To, because nobody wants to, I'm sure this is not a really good time to increase petrol or diesel prices. Yes, definitely not. And diesel prices are actually coming down. Um, wholesale diesel prices are about 190 um, naira per liter obviously retail price would be about 10 10 naira higher than that to so about 200 so it's it's good news especially for manufacturers commodity prices although we're not seeing any effect or any changes in commodity prices at the moment but we expect that you know these lower cost of diesel would you know help um, the manufacturing manufacturers and their cost but at the same time power power is an issue it has gone down to about over 300, 3,500 compared to, you know, the end of March, which was about 3,900 megawatts per hour. So part, it's, it's a contract, it's, it's, they're contradicting each other because at the, at, once you have power, you know, falling, you should see diesel prices picking up. But at this time, diesel prices are actually I'm just coming just thinking down. how to get uh, Honorable Minister Fashola into this hand in hand between the central bank and Kachiku's Minister of Petroleum Resources and get Fashola's uh, powerhouse minister to, to, to join because it looks like, well, it looks like the central bank is on the same page with the petroleum folks so that we maintain 
the kind of template we have where the bridging gap moves and try to that's some form some form of subsidy anyway yeah. that's what it means mm -hmm. isn't it yeah but with fashion, but then how do we get the power guys to join us in this triangle if you want to put it uh fx here oil price here and over there you have uh, the uh, the energy minister. So with the power with the power aspect of it, it's a longer term view. Like you know, you, we need more investments in the power sector. They complain that the tariffs are not you know matching the cost that they're facing at the moment. So with power, it's a supply side policy, which you know is meant to be complemented with monetary and fiscal policy. But this supply side policy, we all know that it's a longer longer term view. So even if you make the investments now, you don't really see the impact of this until about a year or two. <laughs> I just don't feel very comfortable with the fact that every day and month and year we keep saying that the energy issue, power to be more specific, yes. is a long term thing. It's a long term. Is there nothing that we can do in the short term to say let's complement how the Petroleum Resources Ministry is managing petrol, retail petrol prices and the central bank try to provide some FX support to that, try to keep the populace and the SMEs industries running yeah. and get the power, electricity to be a little bit more stable per hour on a daily basis, on a consistent basis, so that somewhere in the middle, folks like you that track consumer prices on the shelf, on the street, can begin to say, look, we're going to see bread prices for the standard loaf, middle class uh, pipe of bread yeah. uh, down from 300, 350 naira to about say 250, 275. Um, with power, you know, it's, it's, I, 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 we can see that, you know, Fashola is making serious efforts with, you know, improving our power at the moment. But then the main issue is the gas constraints, the water constraints. So as soon as, if the government, you know, focuses more on these issues temporarily you know try to fix these issues temporarily rather than you know wait although we were still expecting you know investments in that sector to improve our power generation but then the, the the temporary issues so the gas constraints the water constraints they can actually look into that and make sure that is fixed for the power generation um, companies at the moment oh, let's uh, 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 spend some time again back into the oil sector uh, we've had some peace in the Niger Delta some quiet and we want to say to the camera thank you folks for keeping it quiet down there the militants and the security forces working really hard to reduce the spate of pipeline vandalism so uh, thank you very much for doing a nice job mm -hmm. the key question uh, to you is uh, so what do we do with this piece that we have so that we don't waste it yeah so um obviously right now no insurgencies nothing no no damaging of pipelines. The only, the only, um, the only um, terminal that has issues now is for Cardos, which is undergoing... Among under all the terminals, yes. extra terminals we have. Exactly. So um, right now, you know, there's a 90 days time lag between when, you know, everything is good and that turns into cash. So we should expect that, you know, they're actually maximizing the use of these... 90-day window. Exactly. You know, to, so what we should all, we, all we should do now is just wait and see what happens in the next few weeks you know, to see how production has improved based on the oil prices now. But I would advise that you know, the government should actually take advantage of these, um, the oil price at $54 per barrel now because you can, oil prices are extremely volatile. You know, one day you hear U.S. oil production has increased by a certain amount, you know, taking over the world, OPEC issues with oil production cuts and all that. So it's, 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 it's beneficial for us to take advantage of what we have at the moment. So, so we've got to do something with P because uh, the, 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 the peace in the Niger Delta uh, is coming at a very high price. Yes. Uh, you've seen, uh, we, we've seen um, uh, uh, some of the security uh, agents losing their life. Uh, they live in home families and friends are staying in, in the creeks, making sure uh, that there, there is peace. The vice president has been having sleepless nights, yeah. visiting a number of states, communities in, in the Niger Delta over the last uh, few weeks and months, uh, and try to make sure everybody talking to everyone does a precious executive time he has spent. Uh, I'm sure the Minister of Petroleum Resources also doing the same, uh, sometimes not announced, not in the news. Yeah. So we shouldn't fritter away this because we need a few more things than this piece. We also need investments in that sector, yes, don't definitely. we? Yes, definitely. We always need investments. We're still below our, you know, production standards. We, you know, the Chinese, you know, I heard the Chinese have already, you know, invested.
interested in the agricultural sector or their talks of it, you know, we constantly need investments to push our growth levels to where it needs to be at the moment. Well, we need, we need all that. Thank you very much, uh, Bolan Leo Dusi, uh, for coming uh, this week. We appreciate uh, the two Thank sides you. of it from the agri products to the oil, the world of oil. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the research analysts and the team working for us at the Financial Derivatives Company.